high note. I don't know, Branches. How does she get that high note? I could stop and whistle it. No. She could stop and whistle it. I can't it. remember how to do the high note. She doesn't even realize we're on right now, Branches. Oh, oh no. I don't. Oh, honey, honey, honey. Oh, that was sneaky. I wanted people to hear that nice playing. Oh. It was nice. It was good. I'm not a professional. I just mess around. We need to be doing more of that in our little Worship well, shows. good morning. Bless the Lord. Give God the glory, glory. <laughs> hallelujah. When did you turn that on? When I walked over here. Oh, hallelujah. Now you know why I always say God. we're back. <laughs> we're front. <laughs> but we know that Jesus is up front and center. This morning, hallelujah, Father, we glorify and magnify your name. And as this song says, who are we that you're even mindful of us, Lord? Except we're not starting right Oh, now, so. Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord, that you're thinking about us always. Lord, that we're engraved on the palms of your hands. And you call us friends. And you are a friend that sticks closer than a brother, your word says. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for this day, this new day in you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it branches let's worship our king
again after that extended flute <laughs> quarter solo hallelujah call that? Just that. was that good that was good I wish Annie would use the recorder mm-hmm. more when we're worshipping God it's getting those half notes it's, it's you know mm-hmm. fl- flutes, and, flutes and wind instruments play a, a big part in biblical worship especially mm-hmm. in the Old Testament it was all part and parcel of, of what we would call the worship team the temple actually had one. If you go to First Chronicles 25, you will read there that mm-hmm. David appointed from uh, the, the Levites people, uh, leaders, who uh, and some of those leaders we find have written some of the Psalms. That's how we know that the Psalms are song lyrics for the most part. Uh, three, three worship, we would call them worship leaders, but three leaders who were to lead worship mm-hmm in the temple and they would rotate and take turns yeah and if you went into the temple in the days of david and and saul or sorry there was no temple in david's day i saw and solomon's time and afterwards would you want into the temple to and, and and i believe this is maybe true in the time of jesus as well we don't we don't really get that picture in the gospels but it's we definitely do in the old testament that in as again first chronicles 25 these three worship leaders and what it said is and and it is that it actually gives us a number of the musicians who actually participated in the worship of god it says 282 skilled musicians mm-hmm. and they played if you went in the temple you heard music 24 7 no matter what time of the day or night you went into the temple to seek the lord you would have heard this music playing in the holy place which is the temple 
which is why we put such a premium on worship as Christians in our Christian churches because uh, it's important because we know that everything that we do especially when it comes to the worship of God but everything we do we've talked about this before is a reflection of the things that are in heaven mm -hmm. you know the tabernacle was a reflection the earthly tabernacle of Moses was a reflection of the heavenly one that's there um, as well as the temple we talked about that when we talked about sacred sacred spaces and it's interesting that the temple had worship we understand from Ezekiel I believe it's Ezekiel 28 we understand that um, in some ways the argument can be made that Lucifer was the worship leader in heaven because it says he was fitted with timbrels and pipes Tibrets and stuff yeah. and and you know to do with music and and if anybody understands the power of music it is the enemy it is the devil he understands how it influences us because god gave us the gift of music he gave human beings the gift of music to worship him mm -hmm. and you may have heard me say before i believe that all music comes all every melody that we've ever heard that we we, we think we write uh, uh, stems from the mind of God all music comes from the mind of God and going back to the temple this is why it was important to have music as part and parcel of the worship of God plus the um, preaching of the word they should be hand in hand they should be they, I, worship isn't something unto itself it, it is a means to an end and that's an end to get us into the presence of god to open our minds and our hearts to meditate upon what the lord is trying to talk to us to uh, speak to us about you know that is why the worship comes first in a church and then the word is the last thing that comes the word is the last thing being preached because mm -hmm. that's the important thing that's god speaking to us through his written word inspired by the spirit uh, and just one last thing I always use this for this passage in first Chronicles 25 because one of the problems I see in in the modern church um, and particularly where we put such a premium on music modern music probably a lot more than the ancients did um, I, I would make the argument since well, popular music certainly in the 20th century started to play a, a much larger role in people's lives, personal lives, and music became part of your life. It became tied to your memories, and and much more so than everything that went before, I think. And that was really accelerated in the 60s with the coming of the Beatles. Well, you can even the argument the coming of rock and roll in the 50s with Elvis and and Chuck Berry and all that, and then the Beatles and just. Yeah, our generation, music was uh, an absolute staple of our lives. Everything we did in our lives is based upon it. And I have this theory that God used this revolution of music mm -hmm. in the mid-20th century to create the worship leaders of today, to create those who would understand, who would learn music, learn their instruments, and uh, who God gave gifts of music to because it, it's like any other gift not everybody has a gift of music just like not everyone has a gift of prophecy not everyone has a gift to preach or teach or anything like that but God as the word says God gives his gifts so that the b whole body that everyone puts their gifts together and the whole body is edified through the worship of God by the gifts that he gives uh, and unfortunately, with in modern day churches, modern day worship, um, the the praise and worship team is the most visible, the most glamorous of all the ministries in the church, if you will. So there are a lot of people that aspire to it because it's the one that everybody sees, and everyone hears, and everybody. And there are a lot of people. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people, you know, who listen to this and say, "Well, that's you know, that's what I want to do. I want to get up there and I want to sing and I want to play," but they don't have the gift. God hasn't gifted them to do that. And, you know, people, and we have this thing, well, you know, you should be allowed to worship God. Well, yes, but there was only 282 out of a population of nearly 2 million under David, King, and King David and Solomon. Um, no, sorry, David. This, because this, this, what we talked about in Chronicles was at the tabernacle while it still existed. 
but those worship those musicians went into the temple when Solomon built the temple but that was only a very very small portion because these were the people that were gifted if you go back into the book of Exodus and you read um, where God is instructing Moses to build not only the tabernacle but to make the, the all the utensils in the tabernacle and to make the Ark of the Covenant it wasn't any any old Joe who built this and God tells Moses and he gives a name I forget his name it starts with a B um, I'll put it up there but God tells him I have gifted this man to come and do this work for me out of the, you know the two million people that came out of Egypt, this one man had the holy, and it says the spirit. I well, I will put my spirit upon him, and he will build these things. Moses didn't build the tabernacle. He didn't fashion the altar. He didn't make the ark of the covenant. It was this, this man whom God had chosen and gifted to make these things. And I, I believe it works the same way here. We have, we have people in our church today who are gifted to preach the word of God, but we have other people who aren't, who necessarily are not. And yet we, we think that we know better than God just because we want to do something. I had that said to me by a 15-year-old once that I thought was very wise. He says, just because you can do Andrew. something doesn't mean you should be doing it. If God hasn't called you to do it, you shouldn't be doing it. I was going to stress that point right there. Um, just because you can play an instrument or sing, not necessarily meant that you're called to be Absolutely. a leader. That's right. Because it's a very um, serious calling. It is. Very high accountability. Um, because you're leading, leaders are held to a higher accountability because they're before the people. They go before the people. And um, the Spirit of God the laying on of hands is so important and fasting and praying laying your hands on the leaders to make sure that they're the right ones that god has commissioned and put in place and not just anyone can get up just because they have a gift make sure that you're called you're appointed you're anointing some people you're anointed some people have um that may be a secondary gift mm -hmm. you know there's gifts of yeah. the flesh there's gifts of the spirit mm -hmm. and those gifts go hand in hand yep you know um that work together for the body of christ so and you know another thing too is we always um talk about men and women misusing the word of god and taking things out of context and adding to it and subtracting to it and it's no different from when you're singing the word of god or you're singing your worship to the lord it's just as much a sin to sing a lie than it is, yes, you know, to, 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 to speak one to yes. speak one as well. So it's you have to be really, really um, discerning, discerning, and be careful, and make sure that Today, the Lord has. Make you. sure you are where you're called to be, and doing what you're called to do. Because ultimately, Hallelujah. we all want to be in the will of God mm -hmm. for our lives, or whether it's the church we go to, the <laughs> job we do, you know, what the things that we say to our family. Uh, any kind of ministry we find ourselves in, we must be in the will of God. If he's not in it, it's hay and stubble. It'll just get burned up. And we started off about music in the temple. <laughs> We're still instruments. About ministry instruments. Music. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, yes. Um, where we left off yesterday was women. Which, surprisingly Amen. enough, I, I guess is not surprising because the majority of people on this particular channel are women, women. <laughs> so we must be mm. the Lord must have us speaking things that appeal directly for the most part to women um, but in this case uh, we have the prophet Isaiah we're, we're in Isaiah 32 just to remind you mm -hmm. uh, we finished at chapter or uh, at verse um, <clears throat> 11 isn't it uh, 10 yeah Yes, we, we did 11. We're going to start at 11 today. And, and again, God is addressing the women of Judah. And how we talked about yesterday how um, when, a, when a society, when a culture becomes complacent, and particularly when they do not take into account what God has done for them, and they start 
believing in the lie that this would that they did this all on their own that this was by their own strength that they're here that they're enjoying these riches and forgetting that God says that it is God that gives you the power to give get That's wealth right. um, mm -hmm. if, and forgetting these things and and you you, you start falling into the, the 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 trap that God warned them about in Deuteronomy mm -hmm. 8 about I'm bringing you to a land where you didn't do anything you didn't build anything yeah. here you didn't plan yeah. anything here so don't think that it was by your own strength don't forget the Lord your God well they have forgotten the Lord your God mm -hmm. you know and, and we've been talking all the way through Isaiah 30 and 31 and now into 32 they have they have not trusted in God to protect them against the Assyrians they have gone and, and leaned on an arm of flesh and God is telling has been telling them in the previous chapters just how you know, you're going to see how weak this is how how foolish you were to rely on this arm of flesh instead of relying on the one who mm -hmm. loves Israel, the one who loves mm -hmm. the, the the children of Jacob, who neither slumbers nor sleeps, Sleep. but watches over his people. And yet it's, the same could be said for all of us as right. believers in the mm -hmm. Lord Jesus Christ, that God never slumbers or sleeps. He knows what's going on mm -hmm. in our lives. He knows what's happening. Every intimate detail. Every intimate detail. There are many places in Zechariah. We're talking about the seven eyes of God yes. that go to and fro. Mm -hmm. God sees everything. It's a metaphor that that God is omniscient. He knows all things. He sees all things. Mm -hmm. um, but here we are. We're, uh, God is is not, is is now not addressing the men who are running the show, running the temple, in idolatry, or the government, um, who has not sought the the, the uh, advice of the Lord, His counsel, have not sought Him out, but have on their own initiative gone down to Egypt. Uh, when we started to chapter 30 with that woe to all of those who yes, go down yes. to Egypt um, mm -hmm. that that holds today as well mm -hmm. that's 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 a great f metaphor for all of those uh, when we trust in the world and we don't trust in in God and in, in the things that he has said and he has promised so he's talking to the these and, and what happens he's bypassing these men he's talking to these women he said mm -hmm. because because your husbands, because I have blessed them and they don't recognize that I have blessed them, nor do they acknowledge I bless them, you yourselves are blessed. You sit and you're complacent, you're just fanning yourself, eating grapes, They're whatever. At ease, it you're sounds, at ease. Yeah. And you think nothing mm -hmm. is going to happen. You're going, you know, life is good, is always going to be like mm -hmm. this. We have nothing to worry about, you know. Uh, I have everything I need. Yeah. I don't need to go to the temple. I don't need to go to church. I don't need to go anywhere. I have everything I need right here. And um, a lot of that came through the head of the home. And you know that rebellion well, is passed on to exactly, and that's why I said everyone else you because know? the men, mm -hmm. the men were doing this and acting yeah. this way. Mm -hmm. It gave the women a false sense of security. Yes. Again, yep. something else men will have to be accountable to. You know, the yes, the women were were at ease. Yes, the women were complacent, but they were following the lead of their husband. Mm -hmm. And this goes all the way back to the garden. This is why I'm so big on maybe because I'm the, the, the token male on this channel, but why men are, are I think are particularly going to be held accountable to God for mm -hmm. how we lead our families and how we lead our wives. Um, we're the, the we're going to be held we're going to be judged more sternly because god gave us the authority as he gave to adam adam should have protected eve in the garden as soon as he was there when she was he and i i i think he heard everything that that serpent said to her and he should have stepped in right there and said no mm -hmm. no eve no that's not what God said. You know what God said about this. And, and grab the apple out of her hand and toss it out. That's what a Savior does. When you can't help yourself, when you're falling, the Savior lifts you up and he redeems you. Had that happened, there would have been no reason for Jesus to come to the earth and, and, and give himself as a sacrifice as he had. Um, but it didn't happen. And therefore, we need a Redeemer. And we do need the Savior. And praise God that we have him. Where would we be Hallelujah. if it were not for Hallelujah. the Lord? Amen. And this is the fifth woe. 
This is the fifth woe. For them, yeah. Remember how we started this uh, the section of mm -hmm. Isaiah, that this is six woes that God is speaking yep. to the Israel. The next one is in 33 that we'll be getting to. So we'll be getting that in the next chapter. But for today, yeah. let's. so that's where we are. Yes. God's giving a warning of, in a way, and as you, as I I hope you understood what I was saying, that he's giving a warning to the men of Israel through their wives, mm -hmm. through the complacency of their wives. But they're just as guilty as, as, as their husbands in not trusting in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it's proved by their complacency and by their um, ease by which they live their lives. Mm -hmm. So let's start at verse 11. Tremble, ye women that are at ease. Be troubled, ye careless ones. Strip you, and make you bare, and gird sackcloth upon your loins. They shall lament for the teats, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. Upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars. Yea, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city, because the palaces shall be forsaken, the multitude of the city shall be left, the forts and towers shall be for dens forever a joy of wild asses, a pasture of flocks. Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness be a fruitful field, and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. Okay, so mm -hmm. here, here is the last. This is God's indictment against mm -hmm. not only the nation, but there's also a promise here, the continuing promise that one day God will send his mm -hmm. spirit. You know, we'll get to that or that. But what God is calling, starting in verse 11, God is calling on what we talk about all the time. He's calling to repentance. And this is what repentance looks like. Um, tremble, you are at ease, and shudder, you complacence. Trembling and shuddering are emotions that we equate with not only fear, which they certainly are, but there's a certain humility there, a recognition, a subconscious recognition that there's nothing that you can mm -hmm. do, that you realize that you're up against mm -hmm. it. And the cat's um, here. There, I just went and laid down. Okay. That you're up against it. Um, and, and God says here, strip yourselves. In other words, strip yourselves naked. And make mm. yourselves bare and tie sackcloth around your waist. Beat your breasts for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine, for the soil of my people. In mm -hmm. a, in an act of, of sorrow, sorrowful repentance, so, uh, being in sorrow for their sins, being in sorrow for the sins of the land, being in sorrow for the sins of the nation, of the, the king on down. Now... Genesis it's interesting that the symbology of nakedness in the ancient world and I think this is why when mm. the first time we even see this word in Genesis at the beginning is more it is something that is the exact opposite of what nakedness means from going on from that point at the end of chapter 2 in Genesis mm -hmm. what does it say it says and the man and his wife were naked and they were not ashamed. Mm -hmm. What's inferred there? That there's, we have as a race an inbred notion that being naked, unless you're with your significant other, being naked mm -hmm. to the world is shameful, is humiliating. Um, if you really even think about that, God made these bodies. And we were made in that. In, um, I was going to say the image of God, but it's our souls that are made in the image of God, not these 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 bodies, um, not these particular bodies that we are in this uh, plane of existence as as human as mm -hmm. flesh and blood human beings. But even then, God created them, and they were beautiful. The man and his wife were not ashamed, but That's when they right. fell, That's right. Shame now suddenly becomes this metaphor for sin. That this is this is what happens when when we are when we sin. It, it pride rises up, and our pride and it is our pride which is wounded when we think that we're naked, and we shouldn't feel that way because God 
Job says, he says, naked I came into this world from my mother's womb, and naked I shall go out. It's the same with all of us. You know, we, we will never take anything out of this world that we didn't come in with. And the only thing we came in with was, is, is literally our souls. And th these bodies, these tents, will be eventually taken down and will dissolve and go back into the component parts from which they are made. Also, in the, earth. in the beginning, God's hand was upon them. They were covered by God. They were covered by God. And their relationship was perfect. Everything was perfect perfect in God. There was no need to and, cover up because they have this covering. When sin came in, that filthy garment came over them and God lifted off of them and they had that they had to cover themselves. So now they're doing it themselves. It's no longer a, a relationship with God, it's self. It's that like you were saying the garment of pride that all those shameful things came on them. You know, and what well, and the, which begs us another question, which is that's good, honey, and that because I, I it begs another question. This whole idea of a covering that Anne was saying, as soon as the scales, not scales, sorry, as soon as they saw their eyes, it says their eyes were open and they saw that they mm -hmm. were naked. That was the first thing they saw yeah. when they ate that fruit. They didn't they didn't think, oh wow, look at this world that God created, and maybe and look at this serpent and look at. No, they, they looked at each other and saw that they were naked and they were ashamed and they sought to cover themselves. Mm -hmm. And and that's the sin in itself because now they were covering this exactly what Israel's doing. Covering themselves instead of allowing God to cover them, mm -hmm. which he had to up until this point, which he had up until the point. And God now... The innocence in, in was taken Later away. on, this is where he's, you know, the first sacrifice happens, where the animals are killed, and they're given skins to wear. And, and that, when Lamb was saying that, that begs a question. Did God do that? Did God slay those animals and give us something to wear for our sakes or for his sakes? Was it because we couldn't stand our own nakedness or he couldn't stand our sinful nakedness? That he gave us he gave us uh, the the covering mm -hmm. to cover his eyes because Isaiah fifty nine says what that your sin has separated you from your God and he mm -hmm. has hidden his face from your iniquity. Mm -hmm. Part of hiding that face is giving us animal skins to wear so he doesn't have to look at us. Good, that, that, that's a good point, mm -hmm. honey. It's a good question. We we could probably spend a whole oh, searching the scriptures on that. A whole round table talking about that, like yeah. I, it's probably a little of both. It's it's definitely probably a little of both. But the role that women play in the in the the Bible, particularly in the Old Testament, but um, in New Testament, it's a little different. I I think that women are more. Um, the faithful witnesses, if you will, mm -hmm. in Look the New Mary, Testament. Eh? The tomb. She was one of the first. But in the Old Testament, if, if, if any of you have studied any of these theories that are put forward about the rise and fall of civilizations, and there's one in particular, um, I, I can't remember exactly what it is, but mm -hmm. uh, other people will join it. Um, I remember reading there was, there was seven or ten points of how to how we know when a civilization is in decline and there are the things that happen in society that I, I for every empire that's happened it goes through this cycle of rise fall mm -hmm. get to the point and then or rising to a pinnacle of power and then falling and i think you're all our dear american sisters brothers and sisters i think you all acknowledge that because certainly we acknowledge that here in Canada that we are on the decline of our civilization right now. Mm -hmm. We're living through those days. Oh yeah. Well, mm -hmm. one of the signs of that of the decline of civilization in this particular and, and this is what I like because I find this is very true. And again, he's not speaking the, the, this list that I was reading. This historian that said this was not talking from a spiritual point of view. He was talking from a historical point of view, and it is one of the hallmarks was the decline of women's fashion decline in women stop dressing with modesty Morally. modesty 
Mm -hmm. They stop dressing that way and they start dressing provocatively. Mm -hmm. They start they they start really accentuating Lust their the sexuality. Flesh. This is a hallmark we saw it in, you know, in, in, in as the various the world empires, in including the Roman Empire and uh, all the other. You can look it up yourself, but I, I always thought that was interesting because I see that in our own culture, in mm -hmm. our own society. I don't need to tell any of you who who are believers in Jesus Christ exactly where our society is. So you only have to turn on the television. You only drive down the street and see the the ads. Uh, of where and and see what women are wearing today and what's on the internet and everything it, it's in your face constantly and increasing every day that's why I pray for the men and I'll strengthen them huh? it, it's 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 a decline and in in this way this nakedness that that women are almost naked in all of these things is is causing shame to the nation and that's that's what God. That's mm -hmm. what we should kind of infer here in picture when when the, when Isaiah says, he tells these women, get off the couch, strip yourselves naked, make yourself bare, yeah. and tie, make a sackcloth. Now we understand that a sa what's a sackcloth? That's the metaphor for repentance. Mm -hmm. You need to repent. And why is it? Because it because it's just the texture of a sackcloth is so rough and uncomfortable that's right it's, it's to bring your body into subjection so that your mind focuses on the Lord it's like fasting for your for your stomach apologize for the noise it's the street sweepers and as Annie's going to read because uh, in her uh, well I was I was just reading that um, in the Middle Eastern culture back in the day uh, the women they would strip themselves of their clothing and they would take the sackcloth and tie it around their waist. You know, and that was what they did in their culture. And and the men too. Again, Because Joshua one, did the same thing all going in back Genesis to the 37, yeah. 34. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's, it can be that, and this is where nakedness, because of what happened mm -hmm. in the garden, nakedness has all these different elements to it. It can have these elements mm -hmm. of a sign of repentance. It's also a sign of judgment. And we find that in Isaiah 47. It's not talking about Israel here, however. It is talking about the, the nation to come, the nation mm. that will ultimately bring God's judgment upon Israel, and that's Babylon. Mm-hmm. And Isaiah says, Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Mm. Sit on the ground without a throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. Nations are always referred to right. as, as she, as women, mm -hmm. women, even today. For you shall no more be called tender and delicate, or in this case, you shall no more be called complacent and at ease. Mm -hmm. Take the millstones and the grind flour, put off your veil, Strip yourselves. Yeah. Strip off your robe. Uncover your legs. Mm -hmm. Pass through the rivers. Your nakedness shall be uncovered and your disgrace shall be seen. Right. I will take vengeance and I will spare no one. Our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, is his name, is the Holy One of Israel. And it goes on, and this is, this is, we'll be obviously talking about this in future study when we get to Isaiah 47 about this uh, indictment, this judgment mm -hmm. against Babylon. Babylon. And how naked, how that is a sign of their nakedness. And, and God will say this in other places to the children of Israel as they're being taken, as, as Jerusalem is in flames he, in Jeremiah, he will, be, he will be promising them. Mm -hmm. Be saying you will be you women will be brought naked out of the city and into Babylon into captivity. So um, and and I think that's what's at play here. Um, I, oh, actually, both those things are at play here. The fact that you strip yourself to repent. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you do not, then I will. In that same vein of you being naked, you will still be stripped. But rather than repenting before me so that I might restore you because I have struck you but you will revive us after two days Hosea 6 he said but other, you will you will either be naked in repentance or you'll be naked in judgment your choice mm -hmm. and it's interesting that they tie it around their waist 
because what is what is tied around our waist as believers it's the girdle of truth the girdle of truth they did the not of truth. yeah they did not want truth that's right you know so they in repentance you're repenting for the lies you're repenting for the sin the not turning to god who is the truth the way and the life you know and i don't know that just came to me and that's what, that's what verse 12 is, is, is about, okay? And, and, and I agree. I think this is mm. mainly about God calling them to repentance, first of all. Mm -hmm. And he's, he Again, says, the word once repentance. you strip yourself, you huh. beat, beat, you're beating your breast. Lord we all God. know that that's a simile for, you know, repentance. We, Sorrow you know, we see and, that yeah. and, and being sorrowful. Yeah, um, grieved. But he's saying repent, mm. not but repent. Repent for what you've done in your sin to the pleasant fields. It says the pleasant fields for the fruitful vine. The inference there is these things that I've given you, mm -hmm. this land that you're so in love with and that you think has is, is enriched you and given you all these things, you don't realize that this is my gift to you. Right. That it's through right. me mm -hmm. that, you, that you have these things. For the soil mm -hmm. of my people growing up in thorns and briars. That kind of reminds me of uh, what the Lord Jesus the said curse in uh, on Adam too. <laughs> the parable, yes. Well, starting with Adam, henceforth when you till the ground, it'll be th thorns and thistles. Because of your sin, yeah. But Jesus also said that you know the parable of the seeds that mm. some of the seed fell amongst these thorns and bristles and was choked out, representing how the world will choke out the word mm -hmm. if you allow it. And we're not to be conformed. To the ways of this world but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind by the truth of god's word hallelujah amen um and mm -hmm. and and you know repent for these beautiful homes in the city of jerusalem the joyous houses in the exalted mm. city this is specifically jerusalem the exalted city god has exalted jerusalem this is the city of the great king he has chosen it through David, this is the city of David. Um, he said, "Be afraid for that." But now, the repentance turns to condemnation or to judgment in verse uh, fourteen, because now God looks ahead and He said, mm -hmm. "Because if you don't, the inference here is because if you don't, the palace is forsaken." God is seeing this. Your palace is forsaken. The populous city is deserted. Why? Because the Babylonians have taken you all into Babylonia. The hill and the watchtower will become den dens forever. This, you know, this is all a symbol of the abandonment of God. God will leave you to the the, the jackals and the owls, so to speak. Mm. He's, he speaks the same thing. He uses the same kind of language as we'll see when he when he's judging Babylon and when he's judging Nineveh. Um. Uh, a place where the where um, the the shepherds will pasture their flocks in the ruins of these of this once great palace, this once mm -hmm. great city, and people will walk by and they'll go. It says I will lay it waste; it shall not be pruned or dug, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain on it. That's in Isaiah five six. So he's even he's been, back then. He's been using using the same, well, yeah, the same similar the same consequences, metaphor, ideas, the same. Yeah. So, so they can picture what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. What this is too is this is a prophecy of the Babylonian exile. This is it is going to happen. It is going to happen. Um, but it, it is going to only it's going to happen for as long as God says it happens and mm -hmm. then there is a wonderful until and mm -hmm. in this until is yep. not only um, uh, the fulfillment of a prophecy that I will bring you back because he's already said and he'll be saying that throughout Jeremiah I will be there's no point in use fighting the Babylonians mm -hmm. make peace with them because if you don't They'll come and take the city because God's told yep. me that's exactly what His They're will is. They'll take the city, you. and He's going to take you away for seventy years, mm -hmm. and this whole th and uh, Jerusalem will become a field of ruins. Um, but 
And, yeah, and this is why Jeremiah is so wonderful. He said, but God says, there's, there's, all, there's, it's only for a short time, and then mm -hmm. I will bring you back. And we get this same idea in verse 15. Until the Spirit is poured upon us from on high. Right, this Spirit is, of God. This is this is the same one mm. that we love to quote because this is mm -hmm. not only a prophecy about bringing the ba the Israelites back from Babylon. This is the promise also. Remember how I told you the telescopic character of um, prophecy, prophecy, especially in Isaiah, the now and and the not yet, mm -hmm. and the now and then. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen now, and it's going to happen then as well. Uh, we Repeat all itself, love yeah. this particular passage. We quote it all the time. Peter quoted it on Pentecost, and that is Joel 2, 28. And it mm -hmm. shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out yes. my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters yes. shall prophesy. Yes. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall yes. see yes. visions. Yes. We're all familiar with this. This is another instance of that particular mm -hmm. prophecy. This is a great thing about biblical prophecy. It, it, it's just, like I said last week, it's not one and done. It can That's happen right. many mm -hmm. times. And mm -hmm. one is a reflect the, the coming the, the coming of the children of Israel out of exile back to, to Babylon Hallelujah. was a picture for all of us about us coming out of sin right. and the coming of the, the Holy Spirit. The land of Egypt, coming out of the land of Egypt. The idolatry and the attachments. And when that happens, Hallelujah. again, we're getting more prophecy here, but when, we, when, when mm -hmm. the Spirit does come, so the wilderness becomes a fruitful field. The fruitful field is deemed a forest. That can not only that Hallelujah. you could all, you could even take that even further and say this is the coming of the kingdom of heaven. This is when Jesus comes a second time, mm -hmm. establishes his kingdom and justice, and the earth will be filled with the glory of God, with the knowledge of God. But this could also refer to the coming of the church, the coming of we as Gentile mm -hmm. believers. The wilderness, which is everyone outside the covenants of God, um, we become a fruitful field. Why? Because Jesus chose to show mm -hmm. himself to us, to reveal Amen. himself to us through the Apostle Paul. And the fruitful field is deemed Hallelujah. a forest. Yes. Um, again, you can see this. The fruitful field could refer to Israel in the millennium. It could also refer, uh, it's also referring to the wilderness, that this wilderness becomes a fruitful field. And now this, our fruitful field has become a forest. We've gone from being this field that only had a few flowers and stuff into a mighty forest. And you could see that as, as the spread in it of the church of Jesus Christ across the world through the last 2,000 years. Um, and along the same lines of the spirit that we Joel that God's going to give the spirit, we find this in Ezekiel as well. Ezekiel 36, verse 26 says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my commandments and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. Amen. And again, in Ezekiel, there oh, is a yeah. multifaceted oh, prophecy yeah. about the church, but also the restoration mm -hmm. of Israel. Mm -hmm. Always keep in mind that the existence of the church and the success of the church is always coupled with the restoration of Israel mm -hmm. at a future date. Because mm -hmm. this is God's will. This is God's will. So, um, along the same line, verse 16. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness remain in the fruitful field, and the work of the righteousness shall be peace, and the effect of the righteousness quietness and assurance forever. And my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. When it shall hail coming down on the forest, and the city shall be low in a low place, blessed are ye that sow beside all waters, that send forth thither the feet of the ox and the ass. 
Mm -hmm. I, now, mm -hmm. this is the the completion of the prophecy of again that works on of the end days of the end times of the restoration of Israel the restoration of the the new Jerusalem if you will um, when and again this this takes it a step further as I said before when we're talking about the fruitful field becoming this mm -hmm. forest could be seen as the church Mm -hmm. um, then we we step it up a notch in verse 16 because when he said then justice will dwell in the wilderness and righteousness abide in the fruitful field it's still talking about that but again mm. this is part of this prophecy that uh, if it's prophesying about the church it hasn't happened yet I don't think there's any of us mm. out there who could mm -hmm. say that the church today dwells in justice or that mm. righteousness abides. There's a remnant where, you know, a small portion of the church where righteousness abides. Righteousness is to abide in every believer because yes. we have the righteousness of Christ Christ's imparted into us. The robe of us. righteousness. So maybe a Hallelujah. little bit further than that. But that fruitful field now, so in that way, yes, it's true. The fruitful field does abide in righteousness because we have the spirit and the life of Christ in us. It says remain. It will remain there a uh, mind says abide which means yeah, to dwell abide, in yeah to yeah. dwell in um and mm -hmm. the effect of the righteousness will be peace well we don't we don't have the work of it yeah the lord's peace for the most part we we have peace in some places but the world is hardly a peaceful place right now oh no and jesus said i haven't come to bring peace i come to bring a sword that's right um but it also mm -hmm. says that the result of this right of Christ's righteousness, of this righteousness to the fruitful field that is talking about here, mm -hmm. the result of this will be quietness and trust forever. Again, this goes back mm -hmm. to what we've been talking about for these last three chapters. God appealing to his people to trust in him. He appeals to Israel back then. Right. He appeals to us now. Trust in in trust him his even name. if you don't see even if you anything see happening it. and you don't see the results of, of things trust in him he's working all things out for good jesus always trusted in his mm -hmm. father mm -hmm. there was never any question in his mind and that's why he it said i only do life. what the father right. tells me to do i only say what mm -hmm. he tells me to say oh. mm -hmm. um and now that's this is this is a fact. This relationship that Jesus had with the Father is now ours to have when we have His righteousness. And my people yes. will abide in peaceful habitations, in secure dwellings, and quiet resting places. Mm -hmm. I like that. Now, can we make that argument when when God is saying my people is He referring to Israel here? Have 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 they had peaceful habitation? <clears throat> are they dwelling in secure dwellings? Do they have quiet resting places? Well, given the news lately, what's going on in Israel, the, the history of the, of the modern state of Israel is, has been anything but that. That's right. Wars yeah. and rumors of wars and all sorts of things going on, terrorism and mm -hmm. all that. It, they haven't had it's All that. throughout their history, they've been a scattered people. Exactly. You know? So... Is this? Can we say this isn't for Israel? No, this is for a future time for Israel. I think mm -hmm. it is also for the people of the book, uh, or well, the we are the the way. <laughs> That's a good way. The people of the book are, is the Islamic, the ancient Islamic way. That's what they call Jews and Christians, the people of the book. The mm -hmm. book being the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a promise that I think we, for the most part, those of us who trust in the Lord, those of us who have His Spirit indwelling in us, we can say that, that we live in peace, regardless of all the chaos around us. Our, our hearts are at peace with the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, we live in secure dwellings mm -hmm. that doesn't necessarily mean your actual house, although it can mean that. And, uh, you know, our dwelling place for our souls right now is this is our house. This is our house, yes. This is our, our house temples. now. So it could be mm -hmm. promising, you know, for the most part. But we also we also know that that very strong believers, this is not a secure mm -hmm. dwelling. But there is something in this mm -hmm. passage that we do have that each and every one of us has. Mm -hmm. And I like what it says: in quiet resting places. 
That's I, mean, I kind of yes. touch. I tried to touch on this when we talked about the sacred spaces. The, how important it is for us to have a quiet place where we Amen. meet God. Mm-hmm. All of us have All that of us, place. Yes. We can shut out the world. We can shut out what's going around us. We can be still and know that He is God. We all have that place. And praise God that we have that place. And Jesus told us about this. Yes. In this quiet place, it's the same place that Jesus spoke about when He said, when He was talking about the Pharisees, He was talking about how they love to stand on the street corners and pray in prayer Mm -hmm. tassels and show everybody how spiritual they are. But Jesus said, when you go to pray to the Father, go into your closet, go into your your quiet place, shut the door and pray to your Father in secret, who hears in secret, but will reward you openly. Mm -hmm. Um, And when we get to that place, we have the secure, uh, we have secure dwellings Mm -hmm. because verse 19 says and so when all these things happen around you when the hail falls the forest falls mm-hmm. down and and uh, the city is utterly laid low either by siege or by internal politics if you get my drift mm-hmm. um, and those of you who have been following the news this year you know how bad the forest fires have been across particularly across North America um, yes, yes, yes. You Keep will not be prayer. moved because you will have this quiet place mm-hmm. where you come and you meet with the Lord and you're strengthened. And when that happens, you get verse 20. Mm-hmm. It says, Blessed are those, are you who sow beside all waters, who send out freely, you know, the feet of the ox and the donkey. And it reminded me when, when, we were, when I was reading this is that he leads us beside the still waters. Amen. Right? And and we don't have to worry about, you know, we can send out freely the feet of our oxen, like the working in the fruitful vi- vineyard. You know, we're blessed once again, we're blessed. Amen. Even though, I mean, I think hail here represents the Assyrians, the enemies of our soul, yes. right? And every, well, every, all the external things. Are yeah, going on, yeah, like you were saying. Yeah. Yeah, but we don't have to fear those things. No. And this idea of, just to finish, just this idea of um, sowing beside the waters, these living mm-hmm. waters that God gives to us. Um, my uh, commentary uh, refers sow, to Ecclesiastes seeds, 11, yeah. 1. Uh, mm-hmm. That which that reads, cast your bed upon the waters, and you will find it after many days. It's kind of a strange expression. I often mm-hmm. wonder what that means. But if we go on, it says, give a portion to seven or even to eight, for you know not what disaster may happen mm-hmm. on earth. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves That's on the true. earth. And if the, a tree falls to the south or to the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it will lie. Mm-hmm. He who observes the wind will not sow, and he who regards the clouds will not reap. In other words, what, what the teacher is saying here, what God is saying to us today, he says, don't allow all these external things going on around you to stop what I've called you to do. Mm-hmm. I've called you to sow, to cast your bread upon the waters. What's the bread? Living bread. Mm-hmm. The bread of Christ. We're to cast our that bread and uh, 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 waters means uh, throughout the, the Old Testament can mean populations, people, people mm-hmm. groups, waters. Uh, um, also, a verse came to me is, um, "Cast your bread upon the water, and it will come back to you. Give, and it will come, come back, back to you. To Press you. down, um, shaken shaking. together, running over, shall men give into your bosom." Again, and both these things are, are yeah, in giving. Yeah. In giving in giving, the kingdom of heaven yeah. how we are called to give to kingdom mm-hmm. heaven the thing we should be giving the most is the truth that we have and that is the truth that Jesus is Lord and that he died Amen. for you mm-hmm. Heavenly Father we give you thanks Lord for this again another time in your word Lord mm-hmm. that you show us such amazing things amazing truths about yourself but also amazing truths about our, ourselves Lord how we have to take stock to step back and say, Lord, am I yes, doing Lord. what Israel did? Am I trusting you? I say I do, but am I really trusting you, Lord? Mm-hmm. Am I sowing my my seed beside the waters? Am I doing what you have called me to do? Or am I allowing mm-hmm. other voices to come in? Am I allowing other things to be said 
that that occupy my mind have I not gone into the quiet place Lord mm -hmm. to seek you Lord to be still before Jesus. you and know that you are the Lord Lord we repent father if we have done that if we if we have allowed yes, Lord. ourselves to be distracted Lord God mm -hmm. we repent and we give you praise yes, and Lord. honor and glory and know that you are the one that you are the one that gives us your peace Lord God and it is only in you and through you and by mm -hmm. you, Lord God, that we are in secure dwellings. And Lord, to that we thank you. Jesus. And we also thank you for all the dear branches who, who join us this morning, Lord, and all who will watch this mm -hmm. video. We pray your blessing upon yes, them, Lord, Lord yes, God. Lord. Bless their going in and in coming Jesus out, Lord. Direct name. their paths today. Direct their yes, feet on the paths Lord. of righteousness, Lord God. And let the, the door be open, Father, that we may be able to cast the bread of truth the bread of life upon the mm -hmm. waters yes, that Lord. some may hear today and receive and be saved yes, by Lord. the power of the Lord Jesus Christ yes, and Lord by Jesus. his resurrection we thank you Pray father for all of these Jesus. things in the mighty name of Jesus amen. amen sorry for all the noise in this video we have a sweet uh, street sweeper out there yeah. it's like four times he went by now should be the last anyway time. It doesn't matter because we're done. We're done. We're done. Praise so God. thank you for joining us this week. Um, and, and, and all of our studies, uh, both um, New Hope Mondays, Truly Unique Tuesdays, yeah. and what Ann and I do here throughout the week. Uh, and whoever else. And whoever else. Yeah. Tomorrow is Living Stones. So we'll pray that you'll you'll join in tomorrow mm -hmm. afternoon, and then Sunday night is always communion, mm -hmm. and that's always a blessing. And I pray you'll join us then. So, yes. until next week, branches may the Lord richly bless Amen. you, and remember Love to you stay in the vine because without Him, we can do nothing. We can do nothing. We cannot. Hmm. Bye. God bless.